All right, and we are back with Tyler Adams. We'll begin with questions and start with Ryan Talmadge from Gold.com. Hey, Tyler, how's it going, man? How are you doing? Good, good. I just wanted to ask you just about today in that, you know, you spend four years building up to, to get to a point where you get to a World Cup and then you get to today and it kind of find out what that's going to look like. And, you know, at this point, you know, you're, you're just like the rest of us where you're sitting here watching – you know, a bunch of retired players pick numbers out of boxes and, and figure out what's going on. So what, what was it like for you watching on today and learning this path? And, and how did you kind of uh, handle everything that went with learning what you're going to be doing over the next few months? Yeah. So for me, the suspense now leading up to the draw um, had a little bit more emotion than, than normal uh, for something that, you know, like you said, you wait so long for that moment. And, you know, I've watched draws before, but when you're not playing in it, it doesn't have that, that suspense, that feeling. You're just waiting to see who the U.S. is going to play. And, you know, now, you know, being a part of something that you've worked towards to, to, to earn this draw and um, be a part of, um, it's something special. So, you know, when you saw the U.S. get picked and, and obviously Carly Lloyd was, was excited to, to see our, our, our country called, um, it, it had a, a great feeling to it. Next will be Jonathan Tannenwald. Thanks, Michael, and thanks, Tyler. Um, you know, what's it going to mean for you to play England? You know how much it's going to mean for so many fans in this country who watch the Premier League sometimes even more than they watch American soccer. Um, you know, you've, you've dealt with a lot of the English media. You've dealt with the media that are based over here that cover the Premier League and, and European soccer. You know all of it. What's it going to be like for you, especially if you were in the captain's armband in that game? Yeah, again, again, any any game in the World Cup is, is going to have a, a lot of meaning. Um, you know, for, for myself, I, I was one of those kids that grew up watching the Premier League, you know, watching Arsenal every weekend and watching Thierry Henry, who was one of my favorite players and role models. And, you know, obviously had a big influence on me when, when he came to New York Red Bulls, the, the club that I played for growing up. So... Um, you know, to play against England, to play against such a, a notorious side with so many, um, you know, big players, talented players, you know, these are the games that you want to be a part of. You get to test your abilities uh, against the best players in the world. So, um, yeah, it will be it will be really, really exciting. Next will be Leander Sherlockins. Hey, Tyler. Um, what do you remember about your time in Bradenton when you overlapped with Christian and with Wes? And, and how do you think that connection you guys built then shaped uh, the national team as it exists today? Yeah, so I remember my, uh, my residency days quite fondly. Um, you know, it feels like yesterday that I was moving away from home at, at 15 years old and, you know, starting a new journey, you know, moving away from, from the family for the first time, um, being able to play soccer every day. Uh, and, you know, that was kind of my first priority instead of school. My mom wasn't too happy about that, um, but she allowed me to go anyways. And, um, you know, for me, the, the relationships that I built there and the friendships that I built there, you know, I'm lucky to say they do carry over onto the field now, you know, me and Weston and, and Christian, you know, being roommates and, you know, living with each other at a young age, you know, we're, we're probably a bit naive. We were living in almost like a fantasy world of just waking up every morning, playing soccer every day. And, you know, we didn't really know where it was going to take us at the time, but um, we all worked extremely hard to, to obviously get to the senior national team. And I think you can see when, you know, when we play together, we're, there's an excitement about our game that, you know, you get to play with, with guys that, you know, are obviously talented players, but, you know, guys that you grew up playing with and um, guys that you enjoy being around. Next will be Brian Strauss. Thanks, Michael. Hey, Tyler, good to see you again a couple of days later. Um, I, I, you talked about the suspense while you're watching the draw. I'm curious if you find yourself, I don't know if rooting is the right word, but kind of hoping for one of two kind of extremes. Are you sitting there thinking, man, I want Mbappe, I want Messi, I want the, the biggest challenge possible, the toughest teams, the brightest spotlight. You know, I, I want to have the full experience of what, of what this stage is. Or maybe there's the side of you that might be like, nah, I want, I want the lowest ranked teams possible, the best chance we have to advance. You know, give, give, me, give me the easiest potential draw that we could have in the World Cup. You find yourself kind of veering one way or the other as you're watching those balls come out. Yeah, I mean, quite frankly, 
the truth is I, I feel like, you know, you start to realize now going through processes like qualifying and just watching World Cups before is there's really no easy game, you know, when everyone's playing on, on such a stage, um, you know, what you think is going to be the easiest game ends up being the hardest game. So, um, you know, I, I, I honestly didn't have any expectations going into it. You know, I've had a couple Champions League draws now and I've had what's the group of death where we had Man City and PSG. And then I've had groups that are, you know, quote unquote, a little bit easier and they didn't turn out to be easier. So, um, you know, for me, just just, you know, heading into this, it was just excited to see our country called at the end of the day, to be honest with you. We we'll go to Ron Blum. Hi, Tyler. Looking at the, the way the draw came out, do you play in your mind the best way to navigate through the three games and what you guys have to do to qualify for the next round? And do you go through the rest of the bracket and think ahead to whether you face like an Argentina or whatever teams or France you could draw and if you keep advancing? No, to be honest with you, I haven't done done too much thinking about the way we're gonna gonna navigate that uh I'll leave that much up to the coaches uh to to figure out I'll just worry about worry about playing <laughs> we'll go to Paul Tenorio thanks Michael um Tyler you like you mentioned you played the Champions League went to a Champions League semifinal Christian the Champions League final pretty big stages in the game but this is the World Cup and it's a totally different beast globally, but also in this country. Um, you guys will play on the opening day of the World Cup. You'll play England on Black Friday. You're gonna have massive, massive audience tuning in. Um, do you guys think about kind of what the implications are for the sport, the, the kind of that responsibility you have, especially after missing the World Cup in 2018, that you're gonna have this moment to, to maybe really alter the way people think about your team, about the sport in the country, and um, and maybe changing some minds. Yeah, ab absolutely. I mean, how you said it is exactly how I almost think about it. You know, qualifying for the World Cup is, you know, was was a, a task that we needed to accomplish, and you know, we 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 checked that off. But now is um, the time where we're we're going to be able to enjoy this moment as as players to step out on fields first and foremost. But um, we we want to, you know, again change how everyone looks at us as players and, and as a nation and, and ultimately gain the respect of fans around the world, you know, let alone our own fans. So um, it's going to be important that now we have the mindset going into this tournament that we have, you know, really good performances. We're not just there to, to show up. We want to, you know, have an impact obviously on ourselves and, and our team, but ultimately on how, how soccer is viewed, you know, by the fans in the U S um, after disappointment, after not qualifying for the last world cup, and then ultimately globally, you want to, you know, gain the respect of, you know, some of the best footballing nations in the world. Next will be Grant Wall. Hey, Tyler, it's good to see you. Um, this was already an unusual World Cup in the sense of what time of year it's taking place in. And there's very little time between when clubs release players and when the tournament starts. And now we know that the U.S. is playing on the very first day of the tournament. So there's not going to be a lot of time together at all. How do you think you'll approach that as players and as a leader on the team with the guys? Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I, I think when you look at, you know, theoretically just how, how all aligns, it's, it's quite different than anything that's, that's happened in the past. So, you know, how to approach it, it's going to be, you know, a lot up to, to the coaching staff and, you know, how we can fit certain trainings in and the training loads and how all that works because, you know, usually when you're you're coming around mid-season, you're thinking you have the mindset, let me make it to mid-season because you're going to sneak in a little bit of a break, you recharge, and then you go again for um, the second half of the season. Whereas now, you know, you need to make it into, into mid-season, but, you know, be fresh and be ready to go to now play in a tournament format where, you know, you're going to have more games than, than normal. So, um, you know, even for my for myself, you, you obviously want to have a good preseason. You want to make sure that you're coming into the season fit. But I think ultimately, you know, this offseason is really important that you you get uh, you get fresh going in. You recover from you recover the body, the mind, have a good mental break and you're able to start the season well, because, you know, in, in, a, in a tournament setting, I think it's important that you obviously can go into, um, you know, the World Cup in good form. We'll go to Claudio Villalobos. 
Thank you again, Michael. Uh, Tyler, um, coming from the uh, qualifiers, which obviously um, you might have felt, or you actually feel, felt this stuff that we only see it from far away. Uh, I think I'm, I'm right when I said that the, the roughness of the game was pretty obvious there. Uh, and then also you've been on, on the high level of competition in Europe, especially in champions and, and so on. Which one do you expect uh, more to be in the, in the World Cup? Uh, more of the same roughness or is, a, is it a created product? Yeah, I mean, I don't really know. I can't tell you exactly what to expect in the World Cup, but um, I think you're, gonna, you're obviously going to have a combination of both. You know, so many of the teams that, you know, we're playing against, obviously, in the draw that you saw, they have a lot of quality, um, but they're also very combative teams. I mean, people watch the Premier League, you know, week in, week out, and you can see how, how physical the league is, but you also see how much quality each and every player has. So, um, yeah, you know, we, we're not exactly sure what to expect, uh, and that's probably a bit naive, but um, we get to watch these players week in and week out, and I think that's a good thing to give us a little bit of an idea. Next will be Sanjay. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, Tyler. Um, Tyler, I just wanted to get to know, you know how much you're looking forward to the friendlies before guitar and playing a few non contact teams. Uh, Greg talked the other night about, you know, uh, getting getting some friendlies in against teams from other continents. Um, you guys have played almost entirely CONCACAF teams under Greg. So could you talk about, you know, how much of an adjustment you think that'll be and how much looking back, I know there's still a little bit of Nations League left in June, but how much overall do you think the team, the team has gained from this CONCACAF experience in the last however many years? Thanks. Yeah, um, you know, we, we've had a, a few opportunities to play some teams that um, are not from CONCACAF, um, but I think most of them were not under Greg. So I think I had the opportunity under Dave Sarakin to play, you know, the likes of France, um, Ireland, um, a couple more of those games like Paraguay, um, et cetera. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always nice when you can have um, a little bit of a change up and, and have different competition and not really know what to expect. Um, and not really, you know, have too much to prepare on them. So, you know, for CONCACAF, we've been preparing, you know, over and over for, for the same teams. And we've played a lot of the same teams, you know, three or four times now in the past two year, two year cycle. So um, it will be a nice change of scenery to, to play different opponents, different types of players um, and, and, and sort of have that preparation pre-World Cup. And, you know, just speaking about the team and, and you know, how we've kind of developed under Greg is, you know, I think in the beginning, we, we you know, when Greg came in, he had a, a firm style of play and, and how he wanted to play. And I think that, um, you know, now we've been able to, to continuously make adaptations to, you know, the opponents we're going to face, to, to the lineup that we're going to play, um, which has been able to show our depth, our quality, um, and also get a look at a lot of different players in our squad and just really show um, that in different games, we need different types of players. And um, I think that's been important uh, for the growth of our team. We'll take two more for Tyler and begin with Emily Olson. Thank you, Michael. Hi, Tyler. Thanks for the time. Uh, I wanted to, you know, this has been building obviously over the last four years and the last seven months have been one game at a time. It's something you've all said multiple times. Now that you're at a, this kind of inflection point, first of all, does eight months seem like a long time or a short time to you and in, in your perception of, of how everything's going to go leading up to it. And then now that you have a World Cup and the draws over and you can see the group, do you feel this extra added motivation to to continue top form at club over the next uh, few months here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know that if I say eight months is feels like a long time, then it's going to go really quick. And but. To, um, so I, I think it's, it feels like a long time, but I know it will come up uh, rather quickly. So, um, you know, continuing good form is, is you know, a natural um, thing that you want to achieve um, in your club. I think being in and, and playing a lot of minutes is, is important. Um, but, you know, for a lot of our players now, we're continuing to, to fight for positions and, and, and try to earn our spots. And um, there's a lot of games until the end of the season. So there will be a lot of minutes that um, are up for grabs. Um, but yeah, I think that finishing the season is important and heading into, you know, our friendlies and, and, and Nations League and the next couple of windows that we have in, um, in preparation for, for the World Cup are, are important together. Last question comes from Andrew Jones. Thank you, Michael. The Wimpinger wonder that is Silent Adams with this. How did the Budweiser taste 
on Wednesday evening from the celebrations, all the reactions on Instagram from Gino Reno saying my doll, Tim Wyatt calling you legend, Chris Richards calling you my son on there, as well as your thoughts on the dance that Christian Pulisic did with the worm celebration in <laughs> Hague on Sunday. What were your thoughts in regards to him pulling that? <laughs> No, um, I, I think the I think the um, the reasoning behind um, you know Christian celebration was was amazing, and I think that 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 finally shows a side of him that um, is is really really important. You know, I think you know the media always wants to portray a certain side of him and the expectations that are put on him, and you know to see him you know do that celebration in thought of you know someone that that he met and and uh, you know really hit him deep down was important. Um, so yeah, I think he, I think he did a, a good job on the celebration, especially after coming off the hat trick as well. So yeah, it was good. 